Good morning, good morning. Praise God, good morning. Welcome to Tender Hearted Ministries. I am Evangelist Cynthia Lyons. Thank you for joining me today. There is a word from the Lord, but let's just praise God right now just for making it through half of the year. Amen. What a blessing it is. Amen. To be in the sixth month of the year. There's so many that did not make it. So it's not luck. It is the blessings of the Lord. It is the grace, God's grace and his mercy that we are here today. So let's just pause for a minute and just tell God, thank you. Amen. Thank you that we made it this far. May not be in the perfect health, may not have everything together, but God has blessed you and touched you with his finger of love. So hallelujah. God, thank you for all that you have done, all that you're doing, and all that you're yet to do. Amen, amen. God is good, and he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Now, please get your Bibles, get your sword in your hand, get your, if you haven't downloaded that app, please download the app, get that app, and uh, get your Bibles, and follow me in the Word, because there is a Word from the Lord. There's going to, I'm going to give a short message and next week god willing lord spare my life i'll give the conclusion to the word but because it is first sunday we want to take communion amen so get your sacraments ready get your bread or crackers get your juice we're going to pray over those things that god will change it from a natural use to a spiritual use amen praise god praise god hit the share button we're lifting up the name of Jesus worldwide. You never know who will surrender and say, what must I do to be saved? I get messages all the time in my inbox. There's so many hurting people out there. And I want to encourage you to give. Give something. I mean, people are hurting. People are in need. And we are called to help. Yes, we are. We are called to help. That's part of our mission. Amen. As Christians, praise God, to let our light shine. Amen. And God blessed us with resources so that we could be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Now, get your word and uh, go with me to, I'm just going to look at one verse, but we're going to read. Uh, verses 13 through 16 that's first peter chapter 1 and i'm reading from the new king james version of the word of god and uh, first peter chapter 1 verses 13 through 16 and the word of god reads therefore gird up the loins of your mind be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Amen. And the word of God is already blessed. Praise God. And I want to talk just a few minutes about, I want to talk about developing a holy lifestyle. Developing a holy lifestyle. Holiness is still right. Amen. It's not antiquated. It's not old fashioned or outdated. It's not something that our parents did years ago. Um, it's not something, it's not a look. It's not a look. Some people feel like holiness is a look. You should look a certain way. Yeah, um, not, you know, you don't have to wear long dresses. You can wear makeup because God is looking at, at our heart. Holiness means that we are set apart. Amen. We're in the world, but not of the world. Amen. We should want to live a holy life to please God. Right here, Peter starts out by saying, Therefore, gird up your lungs. Amen. He says, not lungs, your mind. He says, uh, he says, gird up 
the loins of your mind. The, at this, what, what he's saying is holiness begins in our thoughts. Literally means to control our thoughts. Yeah, yeah. It means the idea is to be mentally prepared. Yeah, to get mentally prepared for combat. So when we wake up in the morning, our mind should be stayed on Jesus. Or whenever you start your day, our minds, we have to gird up our minds. The enemy plants thoughts, negative thoughts in our mind. It's one of his greatest weapons is to control our minds. So what we have to do is prepare ourselves. Yeah, roll up our sleeves. You heard that saying to roll up our roll up your sleeves. That means to get to work. As soon as we open our eyes in the morning, I don't know about you, but one of the ways that I get my mind together is first I give God thanks for touching me and waking me up realizing that it is his grace and his mercy he did not have to do it amen so when we wake up in the morning at the very first thing we should do is just say lord thank you thank you for waking me up that's getting your mind right. That's aligning our minds with the word of God. There are so many different and negative things, thoughts that we can entertain, but we are supposed to keep our mind stayed on Jesus. Yes, on holy living, on making right decisions in the eyes of our Lord. Colossians 3 and 2, it says, Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. Amen. When we stay focused on the word and on Jesus, his ways, his commandments, pleasing God, that is girding up our minds. And then it says, um, be, it says, be sober. It says, be sober. And being sober means to be alert and self-controlled. It, re it refers to clarity of thoughts, you know, clarity of our minds. Amen. Making good decisions. Yeah, being sober, you know, that, that when you're intoxicated with anything other than the Holy Spirit, then you can make a bad decision. Anything that... Um, it says be sober anything that intoxicate us it 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 sways our way of decision making we can't make right decisions when we are intoxicated so basically what the word of god is saying just with these two things here is to gird up our minds you know second corinthians is telling us second corinthians 10 and 5 it says we have to cast down imaginations and every evil thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Yeah. And bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of God. Yes. The, the enemy does play with our mind. And if he plays with our mind, then we can fall prey to, you know, being drunk, being intoxicated with other things. And it will change our way of making decisions. Listen, Peter says in 1 Peter 5 and 8 that to be sober, be vigilant because the adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, uh, he's walking about seeking whom he may devour. Yeah, this is this is a, a, a powerful word when you think about it, you know, because I'm a visual person. And just think about it. When we're not focused on the word of God, the enemy is like a roaring lion. And just, just think, if you're not sober, the enemy is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That means that we're opening up ourselves to attacks we're opening up our children to attacks we're opening up our home to attack when we are not you know when we don't gird up our minds we have to pray we have to get into our word we have to follow god's holy commandments amen 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 that is the word for today how how to develop a 
holy lifestyle. We have to start with our thoughts. We have to start with our mind. We have to be sober. We have to be vigilant. Amen. 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 We've been given power to do it. God would never tell us to do something and not enable us to do it. We can do it. If we love the Lord and we're called according to his purpose, we can do this, child of God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Now, that is the word for today. Now, we want to go ahead and take communion. But first, I want to offer Jesus to someone that does not know him in the pardon of their sins. If you have no idea of what I'm talking about, but you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, you want to understand holy living. You're tired of living the way that you're living. You can change your life right now, today, right where you are. Lift your hands and say, I surrender and I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. Amen. Pray this prayer with me. Father God, I repent of my sins. I ask Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. So I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead and Romans 10 and 9 says that if I do that, that I would be saved. So God, thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Welcome to the body of Christ. You are saved. Now, let's, you know, start getting our minds together. Amen. Getting our minds together. Let's think on the things of God. Amen. And not just think on them. Let's do it. You let, yeah, because we are lights in this world. Praise God that people see our light and they want to know what's going on. You know, how can I live a holy life? It's all in the word of God. Praise God. Now get your sacraments. Get your sacraments. We're going to go ahead and pray over those things. Amen. Pray over the sacraments. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now first, the word of God tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that... Um, you know, we don't want to eat unworthily. We don't want to take these holy sacraments unworthily. Amen. So repent of your sins. Get get it right with God. Release unforgiveness. Get it right with God. Whatever's going on in your life, ask God to forgive you now. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father God. We come to you, Lord, thanking you, Father God, for another day. God, thank you for keeping us, oh God, from danger seen and unseen, Father. We bless your name. God, we ask that you would turn these sacraments, Lord God, into a holy use, Father God, from natural to spiritual, God, as we come remembering what Jesus did on Calvary's cross. Father, we come grateful with grateful hearts, thanking you for the sacrifice of Jesus. And we thank you, O oh God, right now that he is sitting at your right hand, making intercession for us. We give you glory. We give you praise. We thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Now, on that fateful night, on that fateful night in the upper room, Jesus took bread he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. He said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you do this, do it in memory of me. Let us eat. Amen, amen, amen. Likewise, he took the cup. And he said, this is the New Testament in my blood. As often as you drink of this cup, do it in memory of me. Let us drink. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. As often as we eat of the bread and drink of that cup, we do so proclaiming Jesus' coming. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, meet me again next week, 9 a.m., for the conclusion of the matter. Amen? Meet me next week, 9 a.m. Until then, walk in power, walk in victory, walk in love. God bless you. Amen.